Great day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today, we will continue the discussion of marketing research and we are already on part 3, uh, secondary sources of information. So let's start. So for this uh, coverage, we will have uh, secondary data, reasons for obtaining secondary data, the types of secondary information, Sources of external, secondary data, and other sources. So first, let's define what secondary data is all about. So secondary data or secondary information is information that has been collected by persons or agencies from, uh, for purposes other than the solution of the marketing research problem at hand. Now, these uh, data may have been collected from sources within the researcher's firm or from sources outside the firm. The key point is that the data were collected for some other project or reason than the, uh, the current one. So, uh, there is um, the primary data which uh, we all aim on getting, but there is also the secondary data which is equivalent to related literature in thesis. And uh, all of this information supports the entirety of our research. Okay? So what are uh, the reasons why we have to obtain secondary data? Now, for one, secondary information may help solve the problem. So if adequate data are available from secondary sources, now the primary data collection will no longer be required. Like, for example, uh, Campbell Soup Company base their long-running advertising campaign on the theme soup is good uh, food okay now this theme emerged from federal government data or research is conducted by the government pertaining to eating habits nutritional health and related topics collected over a period of 15 years so that is a very long time and it cannot be disputed by anyone because it is the government who already conducted this type of research. And um, for Campbell Soup's case, they did not need to conduct their own research, okay, because that data is already available and conducted by the government. Okay? And that uh, they have used that data, uh, uh, that slogan, that um, catchphrase, soup is good food, for a very long time, okay? And even up until today, they have uh, used that to market their products. Now, this may be applicable for um, mark uh, for marketing research conducted by the company, uh, but it's a good lesson for us that if we would be able to get sufficient data from sources, then uh, it might help answer several questions. Okay, and uh, again, primary data collection will no longer be required. Uh, reasons for another reason for obtaining secondary data is that secondary information, of course, costs substantially less. So, a comprehensive search of secondary source can almost always be made in a fraction of time and cost required for the collection of primary information. Now, this is particularly true today with online access to research publications and databases. Searching for secondary research helps you avoid duplicating primary research because yes if you have searched um a similar very similar research in google scholar as in um similar location similar demographic then it would uh, uh null nullify your research because there is already an existing one so there's no need for you to conduct your own research right so Another an, an, another thing that I would like to highlight here is that it's very easy to get information nowadays because of these databases, okay? Like Google Scholar and many journals online. Uh, previously or in the past, you would really have to go to national libraries, um, city libraries, or go to other universities to access their libraries. But today, with just uh, a click, of a button, a click of a mouse, you would be able to search whatever it is you're looking for online. And in fact, uh, in Google Scholar, let's say I typed in influencer, 
I was able to get several books and publications relating to um, social media influencers. So I could get a hold of those studies and um, use them later on as my references for this marketing research. Okay. Reasons for obtaining secondary data, uh, because secondary information has um, importance okay, or supplementary uses apart from um, being cited as the actual secondary data or uh, related literature. Let's say you were able to get a research not 100% similar to what you are doing, but you can check their problems. Okay, so you can improve your statement of the problem. You can check how they collected their uh, data. What's the sampling method? Okay, maybe you can search for a research conducted in um, San Jose del Monte or in Bulacan or in the Philippines. Although it's not 100% similar to um, the title that you have. And the purpose of getting that study is just to uh, have an idea how they have conducted or gathered the primary data okay and then defining the population and selecting the sample so this pertains to the demographic so you see um secondary data has other uses apart from being cited as a, a literature okay so those are some of the reasons why it is important to obtain secondary data now, what are the types of secondary information? So first, we have the internal secondary information. And this data is the data that's available to the company. Okay, um, information they are gathering from their customers, from their POS or point of sale uh, machines, uh, from their CCTV cameras, from records, you know, uh, purchase records. Um, uh, warranty cards, okay, costs, so on and so forth. Uh, they serve, of course, the primary objective of the, the business or the company, which is to gather data from their consumers. But, um, for researchers, they can also be used, okay, to, um, further the marketing research. However, in our case, um, I would not expect for you to um, have uh, the access to internal secondary information because companies will probably not share this information with you. Or you can actually get internal secondary information, but this will be limited, and I will discuss that later. Okay, And um, of course, the second one is uh, where we would rely most of our information gathering is the external secondary information. External secondary information available in staggering assortments and volumes, also applicable to all of the major types of marketing research projects, and is mainly concerned with the non-controllable aspects of the problem. So here are examples of uh, secondary data like uh, government, trade associations and press, periodicals and professional journals, institutions, and commercial services. So um, when I searched online for uh, Shopee's annual report, I was able to get it easily, okay, and uh, learn that uh, they are owned and operated by C. Uh, it is a company that um, is mainly uh, focused on gaming, okay, gaming in uh, Asian countries but have also extended their business into um, per having an e-commerce platform, which is through Shop. And uh, their uh, annual report is published online. Okay, uh, It's actually posted here, the link. Okay, So you can do the same for whichever company. Let's say SM Company, uh, Ayala Group of Companies, and many others. For other sources, these are the other um, sources of information where marketing researches are um, anchored from. Although, again, I wouldn't expect for you to be able to get these because 
these are uh, by subscription basis. Like for example, internet databases. We have uh, internet databases such as a uh, Dialog, Lexis, Nexis, and Dow Jones in the U.S. But um, those are paid for and thus uh, by subscription systems. So they provide bibliographic databases, financial databases, statistical data, directory, and full text databases. And then finally, we have syndicated services uh, similar to internet databases. This is for um, subscription-based uh, type of um, service, okay? But they also give out reports on a daily basis like I weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So if you are running a business and you rely heavily on marketing research, this is something that you can um, take advantage of, subscribing to a syndicated service. So, so they would do the researches and data gathering for you. So that's it for our uh, third topic. Now what I need for you to do is to look at least three studies related to your title through the Google Scholar search, okay? If you can download the file, uh, it would be better. If not, just get the abstract from the publication and then make sure to save all the necessary information so that later on you can reference it with um, APA7 format of referencing. And uh, that will be included in your own marketing research report. So that's it. Thank you so much. And I hope you learned something from this discussion. I will see you on the next lecture.